This is the target reveal for Princess. Princess, you've been working on this target since December, this project since December. It has four parts, and I am going to be intersplicing the target reveal that I did with Aziz yesterday with this target reveal so that the audience can see both you and Aziz reacting sort of similar, you know, simultaneously. So this project has been working for a long time. It's time for you to actually see what these targets were about. So I'll give you a copy and I'll read a copy for the, for the viewers, for the audience to see. So the target for this first part of the project is that the viewer will remote view the historical person known as Moses during the moment when he was first creating or receiving the Ten Commandments. I mean, the odds, of, I mean, I never thought that the guy was Moses, though. Like, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, a little background. You have to understand the Ten Commandments is not just the historical understanding of those ten laws on stone or whatever it was. We don't really know what it is. The legends of the Ten Commandments goes all over the board that it was supposed to be objects that went into the Ark of the Covenant that ended up defeating armies. It was, it, we just didn't know anything about it. So we, the only thing we did know is that there is such a thing as the Ten Commandments, because we have that now. And there was somebody called Moses or somebody who got the Ten Commandments. This like desert or sandy-like place uh, with a man that seemed to be a speaker, sort of like a person that does a lot of talking in the village or town. I saw a lot of pyramid-shaped structures. I saw this uh, man, he had like a, he was holding something in his hand. I remember that, you had a staff. Like a staff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he was holding something in his hand and like he also had this object it appeared to have uh, it was made out of what was it like what did I say like wood or you, stone you or said a combination you said wood stone but also metal and actually you described it in different ways you described the sort of the box yeah it was in it but then when you tied the object you said it was sort of cylindrical, cylindrical. do you remember that and and it had little grooves and letters or pictures or something in it that you could see like casting off like um like if i shine a light through it you can see it on a wall or you can like yeah. it was engraved or carved in some way shape or form yeah you also mentioned that it had some energy coming from it, that it wasn't just a passive object. Yeah. I also remember on that section you had uh, some descriptions of some of the, in addition to these pyramid shapes that you had all over the place that you constantly kept back to, you had descriptions of this, uh, like, bird man. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. What was that like? Uh, it it kind of reminded me of, like, a... Like a, a man, he had, like, a robe or cloak something long on I could see a beak it, it kind of reminded me of like what are the gods yeah. or something <laughs> um, I can't quite think of the like name a, a bird helmet or something hun. but I definitely had like a bird face a beak uh, big eyes or you could see the feather uh, you could see the robe that the man that was a had. Interesting. When I saw that that you had written that as one of the people that was near that was a, sort of in the area, I said, "Wow, she's really <laughs> getting historically correct stuff." Ooh. Yeah, and the pyramid stuff was great. So you want to hear what to, oh, was? Um, so this is all about Moses of all things. This is a and the Ten Commandments. You might be a bit surprised about Target Ten B. You ready to go to Ten B? Mm -hmm. All right. I'll read it for the audience while you're hearing it for the first time. The viewer will remote view the artifact that is known as the original Ten Commandments that was given to Moses, but at the current time in the year 2017. Now, this is 2018, but we were doing the project in 2017. Uh, that is, the viewer will perceive the location and surrounding of the, of the artifact as it exists now. What? <laughs>
<laughs> I want to see. I want to relook at my paper sessions for this. This is. <laughs> the the original artifact. Yeah, where is it now? Meaning, was it destroyed? Is it gone? Is it over? Is it done? And I have to say that not only did you, Aziz, and Daz all get the same basic sense of what the object was originally, but you all got the same idea of where it is now, in like some Middle Eastern desert environment with conflict going on. Um, it was, do you remember much about that session? I, I, I remember a little bit. Um, I remember there was a lot of movement and action uh, involved in it. People, people will have to see it when they see your session yeah. and together with everybody else's. I'm sure there's going to be people that, this is like Indiana Jones. Mm hmm that's, yeah. You take <laughs> away the Nazis and you, Aziz made the comment that if you take away the Nazis and put in ISIS, you simply have the same, it's really, we're talking about the same, same type of thing of the Indiana Jones. Where is the Ten Commandments now? It literally is the plot of, an, of the Indiana Jones film. Just now it's been remote viewed. This is literally Indiana Jones with remote viewing. So apparently it's still, what I was most interested in in all, for, on all three viewers is that nobody picked up that it was gone. And, they, and you all had the same idea of where it was. You also came up, do you remember you came up with something, it was dark? A cave. Like a cave, mm -hmm. it was damp and stuff like that. And, all three viewers got the same thing. So wherever it is, is in a conflict-ridden place that's sort it of run all down. It's sacred, but... It's sacred, yeah. <laughs> it's just the movie. It's the same thing as the movie. It's like... <laughs> okay, so originally I got... It was in, like, this sacred location. Like, I drew a building, and I said that it was... You know, I wrote, this is a sacred temple, a place of some sort. But when I went in, it was like, it was wet, um, damp. It was dark. It was like a cave. So I'm trying to understand how that... Well, it was like ruins. It was like... Because it's old, it's right? It's old and decrepit. And I tell you, people are going to start looking for it. But apparently, it, all three viewers got essentially the same thing. It apparently exists. And apparently it's in some type of temple type of place. Is this temple like a museum in the Middle Eastern? It, or is it, it, do people not know that it exists at all? Like, is there no... Uh, it looks like it's, it looks like it's to it's be found. It's just a random place. Nobody knows where he hid it so well. And it's, it's been centuries and no one's found it. It looks like, yeah, it's in a place that no one's right. right How did it get there? there? Ready for target? 20C. Mm. Now this has actually a background section as well as the actual target. So let me read the background for it. Now the background for this target, 20C, is that the Judeo-Christian Bible states in Exodus, chapter 7, verse 14 to 24, that there were 10 plagues that were experienced in Egypt during the time of Moses, and that these plagues led to the release of the Israelites from the land of Egypt. This target will not be tied to a literal biblical interpretation of the plagues or their cause. Rather, the plagues are considered things that happened of whatever nature that ultimately led to the release of the Israelites from the land of Egypt. So here is the target. For this target, the remote viewer will perceive evidence of the first of these plagues, as well as whatever happened to cause the first of these plagues. The remote viewer will, see the, re, will perceive the plague as well as the cause of the plague. Now, why, why did I have to look for that? Was, why did you have to what? Look for that. The well, plagues. we were interested in the story of Moses. Mm -hmm. And Moses and the plagues is part of that story. It wasn't just the Ten Commandments. Uh -huh. It was the plagues as well. And... Do you remember what you did in that? Do you remember the description? I'll use your own words to remind you. Mm -hmm. The chemtrails, mm -hmm. the non-surface structure. The drone. It was the like drone. Drone or... And, and the, I, I couldn't the, the say clouds. airplane because it didn't look like an airplane, but it looked like an, a flying object. I guess we can call that a UFO. Back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and it kind of just reminded... It, all I could see are coming out of it is the smokes, and it reminds me of the chemtrails that we see today. And what was happening as a result of those and chemtrails? And it was causing this, like, 
polluted rain or cloud that just killed everything. Yeah. It was it was like you could see death all around. You could smell it. You could it it was just darkness and death and people were terrified. Yeah. It was messing with the water. It, it did yes. a lot of things. It was the first of the plagues and your session plus as Aziz's and Daz's is, is the first we have of what actually happened. So, so uh, the plagues were created? Yeah, the plagues were, according to our data, it wasn't... Did they have flying things back then? They had extraterrestrials, and apparently somebody had the idea of creating this event to happen. And they engineered a plague, and eventually the result was that the Israelites were released. And the Israelites and the Egyptians, they probably did think God was doing it. What could they do? But in that God that they were talking about that was... Because was, why would God do was that? Was that ship. <laughs> and they, they didn't know what that ship was. Anyway, that's, that's apparently... But people are going to have to see the presentations raw for the first time. So that's... Ready for target 20D? Yeah, I was going to ask because it sounds very similar to... Well, 20C and 20D kind of felt a little similar. So what was 20D about? Now this one was done just by you and Aziz. Daz didn't do it because Daz was doing other work for the project, so I had to split the workload. This was, I was going to say to die for, but just to live for. Let me read it to you. Let me read it to everybody. The viewer will remote view the personality of Moses as he is crossing the Red Sea <laughs> during the departure of the Israelites from Egypt as described in Exodus 14. Do you remember what you got? A, a little bit. Hold on. <laughs> I just remember him being a little crazy. I know. Um. It's, it's, it's sort of shocking. Do you remember the the spaceship with humans in it? Or yeah. humanoids in it? Uh huh. According to you, guiding this large asteroid or something? Yeah. Hitting this the large water in body it. of water? Oh! Splitting the water. That's not fair. And you, in your own words, the people, when the water was Walked shallow. from this side of the water to the other <laughs> side of the water. You got it perfect. I hate this. I have <laughs> questions. I know. But it was a perfect description. So. It, it wasn't God splitting the spleas. It was the extraterrestrial landing this huge thing, pushing the water in all pushing different directions. Pushing the water into the sides and people were able to cross. And the people crossed. <laughs> it was... And, but the weird thing is that you and Aziz got the same thing. You wouldn't, they both, you both had this, the non-surface rock coming in, guided by an by a extraterrestrial. They, they took it from the asteroid belt or something and just guided it and... Put it there. Yeah, but to, to see you guys describe it innocently, and both of you describing the same exact thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remembered, uh... A lot of these sort of fireball-like objects uh, falling from the sky, as well as uh, those fireball-like objects sort of seeming like, I didn't know that like if it was 100% responsible, but like these giant tidal waves of water and a little bit of earth from the water just sort of being ripped from the ground, sort of just leaving like dirt where this river, big wide river was, and uh, yeah. I, when I saw that stuff come in, I sort of, my eyes just popped right out of my head. Do you remember now? I, I remember it, I'm just uh, trying to comprehend it. Um. I remember also you telling me that this was so crazy that you thought you must be terrible and you're about ready to quit and you thought I was going to fire you and the whole thing. This is so crazy. Nothing could be this stupid and ridiculous, you were saying. <laughs> but that was the target and you hit it spot on. I'm lost. I'm so confused. Yeah, no, I mean, like, still, this is a, this is a really interesting one. This is, uh, I'm pretty happy about this project. Yeah. Oh, God, okay. Aziz, by the way, did the same thing. After he sent in every one of these sessions, he, he said... He said, I've got to be crazy. Yeah, he said, Dad, if I need to do this over again, just let me know. It's <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> I'm... I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, it does sort of challenge a lot of belief systems, doesn't it? And even, you know, we just did the war in heaven. 
And that kind of got me a little curious. Like I was curious, but it makes that made sense. Like all of that made sense from any type of mindset or belief. It made sense. But this doesn't make But you have sense. to admit the session matched. I mean, it's what happened. It's <laughs> it's I'm I just keep wanting to be like, no, that's not what happened. Because <laughs> that's not what I saw in the movies or that's yeah, not what I read. Uh, but I, 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 I guess in a sense I, I've, I was there. So I know what really happened. We, I'm able to place myself, you perceive beyond time and space. So that means I can go anywhere, right? Yeah, and, and what, I was this, there. what this is really pointing to is we seem to have a whole history of the planet where extraterrestrials have been doing things behind the scenes in order to make social events happen. But now we know what actually did happen. The Red Sea really was parted. I did say the water was red. I don't remember you saying the water was red. I mean, I said it wasn't blue or clear. Oh, yeah, you did say that. And, and it was highly disturbed because of the mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah, I know in the movies with like Charles and Eston and something, See, it's just like the water parts. But now we know why it parted. <laughs> Technically it didn't part, it just... <laughs> yeah, it just blew it apart. split apart. Yes, yeah. Oh. Well, that's the target reveal for 20D, and that's 20A, B, C, and D. And people are going to have to see the movie to actually see the all the detail that you have. We just covered a couple of the, of, the, of, the, of the major points in each one of these things. But the most interesting thing is to see Daz, Aziz, and yourself come in with one session after the next, totally independently, but coming in with the same, the same basic stuff. So now we know a lot about the Moses thing, the whole Moses idea. Yeah, this is the, this is the nice part when I get to figure out what I've been doing for the past four months type of thing, but. That's one of the base, biggest enigmas, mm. and now it makes sense with respect to sort of the whole legendary so history. Why, of, why does it, why, why don't we learn it this way? Or were they able to see it like that? Did what, is, is what's being told over time the way that it was seen? And we're now going back in a more in-depth situation to look at what happened since we're being particular? Well, or did they just say, we shouldn't tell them we saw a giant rock fall out the sky. Um, we're just going to let them know the water parted, but we're not going to let them know how. They like, may not have understood it, and they probably wrote it up as best they could, given their, their mindset at the time. I mean, those were relatively primitive people. I, the, the sea parted, and we walked through it. Those people did not have flush toilets. Those were <laughs> those were primitive, primitive people, and they interpreted however they interpreted it. And then over the many, many, many years, the story gets embellished. It gets changed. It gets codified. It becomes locked into the Old Testament. And then it's our job to go back and say, okay, something happened. What happened? Now this is great, though. This is pretty cool. And I do want to say one thing to the audience. Um, the Middle East is pretty dangerous. I don't want anybody to go running off like Indiana Jones and try to find the, do the, uh, <laughs> the, the Ark of the Covenant and the uh, Ten Commandments because it's a dangerous place. But it is good to know that when the Middle East calms down, there's something Will it to find. Ever calm down? I don't I hope know so. it to have ever been calm in we, my life. We can always hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> we can always hope for the best. Yeah. How are you going to tell your parents about this one? <laughs>